Hi. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the type of association that can exist in relative frequency tables. All right. So basically, we're trying to figure out whether or not two variables are associated. If two variables are not associated, that means that if we know the value of one variable, it really gives us no information about the value of the other. Two va variables are associated means you know the value of one, that does give us information about the value of the other. So how do we figure out if two variables are associated? All right, first you have to calculate a row or column relative frequencies. Now, I want you to highlight these parts that you see here. If the row or column relative frequencies are about the same for all the rows or columns, it's reasonable for us to say there's no association. If, however, the relative frequencies are pretty different for at least some of the rows and columns, then it's pretty reasonable to say that there's not an association between the variables. So let's look at an example. Example one, a sample of 200 middle school students was randomly selected. The students were asked, what sport do you play? The results are in the relative frequency table below. First, what type of relative frequency table is given? So look, when you want to know, is it a column or a row relative frequency table? Find the 100s, or if it is a percent. If it's just in decimals, then the 1.0s. All right, so here are the 100s. Those are at the end of each row. So this is a row relative frequency table. Now here's where we're going to get a little confusing. Even though it is a row relative frequency table, I don't want to look across. I want to look down, just like you see me doing right here. Let me come over here. I'm just changing my colors. Uh, let's take, oops, sorry about that. And we're going to look this way, okay? So looking, just going straight down. All right, so we want to know, are these percentages, and actually I should have just um, only highlighted the male and female part. Let me get rid of that. There we go. All right, so we're only looking at that. So for football, are those percentages the same or close to the same? No, they're pretty different. What would you say here? They're close. For volleyball, I'd say that's pretty different. Soccer, eh, kind of different. So we would say they're very different. So if we're going to say they're very different, then we say there is an association. So is there an association between gender and which sport is played? Yes, there is. And I'm going to write a complete sentence. So yes, there is an association between gender and which sport is played. All right, let's go to the next page. Example two, a sample, let's go this way, a sample of 200 middle school students was randomly selected. The students were asked, what type of music do you prefer? The results are in the relative frequency table below. First, what type of relative frequency table do we have? Find the 100s. So these are at the end of each row again. So this is a row relative frequency table. Since it is a row relative frequency table, we're going to go straight down, not across, to look at the different percentages so that we can determine what type of association if there is, if any. So I'm just looking this way. I want to make sure you're seeing that. And I don't need to do the total part. Okay. So as I'm looking, what do you say about those percentages? Oh, they're exactly the same. The same. 11 and 13 percent, not that far off. 24, 22 percent, not that far off. All of these are pretty close, basically the same. So when they're pretty much the same, not very different, we say, no association. So 
the question, is there an association between gender and favorite type of music? No, there is not. Okay, so make sure you're writing those as a complete sentence. All right, we'll do example three together. Um, it says, a sample of 200 middle school students was randomly selected. The students were asked, what size t-shirt do you wear? The results are in the relative frequency table below. A, what type of relative frequency table is given above? So find the 100s or if it's not already as a percent, the decimals, the 1.0s. So there are my 100s. So these are at the end of each column. So this is a column relative frequency table. Since we're dealing with a column relative frequency table, when we look for the association, we're not going to go up and down. We're going to go the opposite. We're going to go left to right. So I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to look across at all the female sizes and all the male sizes. And I'm going to say, are they pretty much the same or are they pretty different? So what do you think? Are all of these sizes pretty much the same or very different? I'd say they're very different. And then the same thing here. Uh, they're pretty different also. So is there an association? If they're very different, then we say, yes, there is an association. So the, Yes, there is an association between t-shirt size and gender. Okay. Then let's go to the next page. So you're actually going to do example four on your own and example five. Yep, example four and five. So go ahead, pause the video and do example four and five on your own. Looks like they're gonna require you to fill out the frequency table first. So if you need to refer back, to the previous lesson, feel free to do so. So pause the video and do those now. Welcome back. So examples four and five required you to do a little bit more work. Uh, you, for example four, you had to start off by filling in the relative frequency table uh, on your own based on the information given. So first I want you to go ahead and Pause the video and check over that. Great. And now we're going to come over here. And uh, here is the row um, relative frequency table. And then looking to see if there is evidence of an association. So pause the video and check your work. Great. Let's go to the next page. And so here is example five. And that relative frequency table was already filled in. So pause the video and check over parts A and B. Great. All right, now that you've had an opportunity to try a few on your own and check over, if you have questions about those problems, do, if you still don't understand, or questions about anything that I've said in this lesson, please see me, um, ask, write, jot it down if you need to, and see me so that I can clarify. All right, go ahead. You're ready to submit this and work on your independent practice. Good luck.